Don't want too big of waves out here. So we're looking for porpoises. Hopefully we'll get to see one. Here on the Hood Canal. There's a whole bunch of them out here, isn't there? Chris, that, see that head right there? Dim? See that? That's a seal. Well, good morning, everyone. It feels like it's been a long time since we've been in front of the camera for some reason. It really hasn't been that long, but we have been uh, driveway surfing for the past three weeks. It's a crazy absurd amount of time. It is, it's longer than what we wanted to um, in an absolute beautiful area uh, on the Hood Canal here in Washington. And it's just been great. Um, we're waiting for something. We were waiting for something uh, that's going to change our RV travel lifestyle. So we're super excited about that. And Big change. That will be coming out in the next couple of weeks here, uh, if not already by the time this video comes out. So excited for that for sure. So thank you to everyone that has suggested a ton of great spots to go into Washington. Um, we have already a lot of spots picked out for next time. Um, the weather is just starting to turn a little bit and we need to start moving south pretty it's quick. It's cold. It is. The overnights are getting into the 40s and, you know, that's just, uh, it's not enjoyable inside of an RV. We're starting to deal with the the uh, condensation and the real moist uh, northwest air that we have here in the wintertime. So mm -hmm. we got a little dehumidifier, air purifier combo to help out because... Uh, there's just a lot of moisture in the air here every day and when you heat the RV to you know what 68 70 degrees and then outside's a constant 50 or into the 40s it just creates that condensation on the inside of these single pane windows and um, it's just no fun no that and our workouts suffer because the days are just so cold mm -hmm. it's Th really tough thankfully thankfully we've had a, a garage to to work out in for the past few weeks so but now we're back on the road we're back in the cold and we're just gonna have to deal with it we're now going to cruise a little bit quicker through washington and oregon because the sunshine is calling our names and we're gonna probably go towards california yes quicker than what we had originally planned but before we do we are going to the rainforest which i've been super excited to see last year we made it to uh hurricane ridge in olympic national park but we didn't make it all the way around to the uh, rainforest so now we went around the southern route and we're gonna see some of the hopefully cool beaches like ruby mm -hmm. beach mm -hmm. and i'm really excited to see the rainforest and just uh experience that other worldly the magical mystical rainforest Me, don't feel alive. 
So this is Ruby Beach, and it reminds us of the Oregon beaches that we saw last year that we're gonna kind of miss out on this year uh, because we're gonna go inland a little bit more. But it's cool. It's cold, There's not a lot of people here, but there are a few tourists walking up and down the beach. But I can see why it's, why it's a popular spot to uh, check out the rocks out there. And there's a lighthouse off in the background, but I like it. Yeah, we were just making up stories about lighthouse employees <laughs> getting dropped off for a multiple month assignment. <laughs> How crazy would that be? Yeah, it would be quite interesting to be a lighthouse keeper and have to go out to that island and stay there for who knows how many months on end and uh, have enough provisions to sit there and work the lighthouse every day. And so I think a lot of them are getting automated now, but it's still kind of cool for the old time uh, stories Yeah. to think about it. Yeah, so this beach is really pretty. It does feel like Oregon and it's very tranquil. The air smells so clean and salty and crisp. It's a unique time to be out here when it's this chilly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's something about it. I'm still looking forward to the rainforest though. That's something I've never experienced and I'm looking forward to it. But this was a great little spot. Yeah, this, this was on the way. So we said we better stop here while we're here just in case you never know if your route changes or plans change. So we said we better stop now so that there's no regrets and it's really, really great. Ruby Beach. Ruby Beach. My bunny's name was Ruby. love these Pacific Northwest beaches. They are so fun to go to and so peaceful. So next up, we're going to hit the Ho Rainforest and we're going to go to the Visitor Center. Check it out. Try to learn a little bit more about the ecosystem and how cool that is going on up there. And then try to go on a couple mile hike. I don't know how much time we're gonna have, but hopefully we'll be able to go on a fairly large one and really get in and try to uh, immerse ourselves amongst the forest. You ready, dear? Ready! All right. Turning off the 101 onto the Upper Ho Road to get to the back entrance here of Olympic National Park is where we first saw the glimpse of the rainforest. And you see kind of the canopy thicken and the big bearded mossy trees hanging down. That was a beautiful drive. It was really pretty. Yeah, all of a sudden the trees started leaning in and I said, look at the way those trees are teepeeing towards each other. Mm. And that was the beginning of it. Yeah. And then, Right after that, it was like we were in the thick of the forest. And we got greeted by a good little herd of moose. A big party of moose. Yeah, there was probably, I don't know, 10 or 15 all around the woods. That yeah, was, 15. Was, <laughs> definitely 15. Definitely 15, <laughs> I was counting. 
That was great. So 18 miles down this road gets you to the visitor center, which is where we are now uh, about to go on the Ho, I think it's called the Ho River Trail. And that's a really long one. So it's 18 miles. Um, so you can kind of go as far as you want. Choose then, your adventure, they yeah. like to say. You choose your adventure. You pick when you're ready to turn around. Yes. And there's multiple, there's like a handful of different attractions along the way mm -hmm. for people to give yourself like a goal. Like I'm going to make it to X and then we'll turn around there. Yeah. Should be a fun little, beautiful, hopefully, hike. So speaking of the remoteness of where we're at, um, there is not a lot of gas stations on this backside. So we left... Uh, about a hundred miles from here and we had just over half a tank of gas I think yeah um, so we weren't very worried about it and then we saw a sign that said no gas for 40 miles or last gas so we stopped at that gas station and they didn't have diesel so something to think about I know people have asked before you know is it hard to find diesel do you not do you you know have remote locations where um, they just don't sell it and it's yes. rare but it, it, it does happen. I'd say it's more like situations like this around national parks. But diesel, you know, the trucks take it, like all the major highways, gas uh, truck stops and things like that obviously are, are everywhere around the country. Um, but it's the small towns that may only have one gas station that has it. Uh, but we honestly have never like risked running out of gas or anything like that. So uh today is probably today be, might be the, the day <laughs> today is probably where we're going to be coasting back on on, on fumes. fumes yes we're just going to limp back home and once in a while we'll see some stations that do have diesel out in the middle of nowhere and it's questionable how good that diesel is that's another thing we we that's sometimes true how often into. do they sell it how long has it been sitting in the tank so because you know, we only want the best diesel about. for our vehicle that's very true. We want clean and like fresh, something with a lot of turnover. So sometimes we'll actually pass on a gas station that mm. looks like, you know, it doesn't get very much traffic. A little or, bit of cobweb action on the diesel pump. Yeah, it's like, eh, I don't know, we'll just wait for the next one. Yeah, but otherwise we love the diesel engine. The gas mileage is phenomenal. The power, the torque of a diesel engine is great. It just pulls this, this little uh, 10,000 pound vehicle all around it actually so. makes me a better driver does it <laughs> not really it's not no. it's not that magical. no but it is fun to drive yeah and you know service is not as bad as, as some people think there you know mercedes sprinter is going to have your annual service that you need to do or every ten thousand miles um so you know that's something you have to factor in but all vehicles are going to have maintenance costs and you know, don't be scared of a diesel um, if you are. I would say the one caveat about the diesel system is the uh, exhaust fluid system or the, the D DEF system. That's really, really complicated on these things. And that's where we've had um, some warranty work on this thing. And thankfully that got taken care of. But uh, there's a lot of sensors and a lot of different parts. So that system can get very expensive. Thankfully, they have a five-year, 100,000-mile warranty. And if you're one of the lucky people with the California emissions laws like we are in this New Jersey rig, um, it's seven years, 70,000 miles. So they have this extended um, kind of period that helps you uh, get like some extra coverage on the emission system. Which... That on its own is a lot of information. Aaron might do a little mini session on that warranty. Yeah, how do we get warranty? on this rant about diesel? Let's get to the hike. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Okay. I'm going to tell you that I love you 100 times a day. You'll get tired of my voice. That's how much I'm going to tell you that I'm going to tell you. I'll miss you if you go. Yes, I'm gonna let you know just how much I tell you, Mama. I tell you, Papa, too. I'm gonna let everyone know about my love. So I really hope you love me, too. Yeah, I really hope you love me, too. I'm gonna tell you. 
Chris almost jumped out of her pants right there. I, my heart is beating hard. But he's just a cutie little mansion on the... Be aware of the elusive farm. Well, we know there's more than that out here. Ready. Wow. This is your favorite park so far? Uh huh. <laughs> it's my, it's, it's number one. So far. So far. Currently. As of current time, it's the best park. It is unique. I love this river alongside of it too. Here I just love the spookiness and just seems really pure to me yeah it's old no pretensions here wow what a cool area this is something that you just can't man you just can't experience this everywhere I mean you'll see some like mossy trees in the Pacific Northwest but getting like into this rainforest with the river along the side of it that was really really cool yeah it was really cool when the sun was angling the trees just right it looks super spooky yeah very remote feeling and it's like a perfect time of year in october to come see the crowds aren't too busy and uh the weather's just on the cusp of it being not bad it was like 55 degrees or 53 degrees so one party of hikers stopped us to tell us that there was a black bear a, oh yeah a sizable black bear <laughs> yeah. and all four of those people were like big big eyed yeah like they were white as a ghost like they just were, like they ran into it and turned around yeah which is pretty cool. And then we got kind of wigged out. We're like, do we keep going? Do we turn around? What do we do? And this is kind of, you know, not maybe a mile from the visitor center. So it wasn't that far. There's still people walking around. But we survived. We didn't see it. Yeah, we did not. We just saw a couple deer. And the deer scared me because I was on high bear alert. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> bear aware, they call that. I was very aware. <laughs> wow. All right, so that is going to be, I think, the end of this video, right? Yes. All right. What a fun day. We'll see you guys next time. See ya.